Okay, back to classical mechanics. Um, everything I've done so far was just fun and silly stuff. Now we're going to do some real stuff. And let's write down uh, why do we even care about velocity. We care about velocity because we care about acceleration. And we care about this, F net equals MA. Those are vectors. And so, but the vectors depend on the components and the components depend on the coordinate system. So let's just review really quickly. If I have uh, a position right here, here's some object and it's moving, let's say it's moving, um, let's say it's moving like, like over here in that direction. Okay. Then I can write the velocity as, uh, or I could write that as X dot, but I could also write that as dr dt. And so if I have this position in Cartesian coordinates, R would be the X coordinate times X hat plus Y times Y hat. So that, that's how I find the location of that. So it's just how far in this direction plus how far in that direction. And I have to multiply by these unit vectors to get a vector, this vector R. Now if I take the derivative of that, dr dt, I get dx dt x hat plus uh, dy dt y hat, and that's going to be equal to vx x hat plus vy y hat. But I lied. I lied there, okay, because I skipped an important step. Let's take that derivative again, dr dt. Okay, so if I want to take the derivative of this thing right here, it's a, it's a product, right? There's x and there's x hat. So it's actually going to be x hat times dx dt plus x times dx hat dt. And then I have to do the same for the y plus y hat dy dt plus y dy hat dt. Now, the thing with Cartesian coordinates that makes them so useful and nice is that uh, x hat is constant, right? I could write x hat as this, 1, 0, 0. So if I take the derivative of that with respect to time, I get 0. And y hat is this, 0, 1, 0. So taking the derivatives, I get 0. So this term is 0 and that term is 0. So I get, I get the same thing. What about polar coordinates? So in polar coordinates, I'm not going to use the x and y values. I'm going to use the scalar r and the angle theta to determine that point. So, but I still want to write r in terms of unit vectors. I want to write the r vector. So that I need two new unit vectors. And here I have r hat, which is in the direction of r. And then I have theta hat, which is in the direction of increasing theta. And so here, here I made a little, a little thing right here. So there's r hat and there's theta hat. So now if I want to move in that same location, notice what happens. If I move my position to over here, r hat, that's a hat, and theta hat both change. So this is no longer going to be true where I have constant unit vectors and I have to deal with that. So let's let's do polar coordinates. So here's my picture again. There's my object. There's the scalar value theta and theta and r, right? That's not the that's not the vector r. And then I have r hat theta hat. So what if I want to take the vector r? Well, the vector r is going to just be r, r hat, right? If I want to get this as a vector, it's going to be this distance in that direction. So r, r hat, that's it. Well, that seems like it should be easy to take a derivative of, right? So let's say dr dt. Well, I've taken the derivative of r, dr dt, times r hat, plus r times dr hat dt. And I've already mentioned, right, as this thing moves, the r hat changes direction. So it, I need to know how r hat changes too. And taking a derivative of a unit vector is tricky. So let's do the following. Whenever you have a trouble taking a derivative of a vector, it's easy to switch back to Cartesian coordinates. So let's use our relationship between polar and Cartesian coordinates. So in this case, I could first get x and y. That's my x value. I'm sorry, I'm so silly. And that's my x value. So I could say um, 
x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. And what about x r hat? r hat is this vector. So this is x hat and that's y hat. So what if I just write this? If I say r hat equals um, cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. So let's just check to make sure that works. If let's say r hat was right here in the x direction, so theta would be zero. So cosine of zero is one and I get x hat, so that makes sense. And sine theta would be uh, zero, so that this works, just as a check. I always get that thing mixed up. Now what about theta hat? Theta hat, in this case, it has to be perpendicular to r hat. If you don't have perpendicular unit vectors, you are setting yourself up for a world of hurt. I mean, bad, okay? So don't, they have to be perpendicular. Let me just write this as negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. So if if this is my, uh, let's see, so this is 90 degrees. So I always get, <laughs> so that is theta right there. That's theta. So the y component is going to be cosine theta, and the x component is going to be negative of the sine theta. Okay, so but now I know r in terms of x hat and y hat, which I know are constant and don't change with time. So now I can say dr hat dt equals, I can take the derivative of this. So it's going to be, I'll write it out the long way, d cosine theta dt x hat plus cosine theta dx hat dt plus d sine theta dt y hat plus sine theta dy hat dt. That's the real way to do it and I get something really nice. I know that the unit vectors are constant so that is zero and that's zero. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, wow. Right? That's right, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's negative sine theta, okay, but I need to take the derivative of, I can't just stop there, I have to take the derivative of theta too. So I'm going to say, I'm going to write this as, for now, d theta dt, x hat. And this one is going to be, the derivative of sine is going to be, that's x, plus cosine theta d theta dt y hat. So I can write this as, I'm going to write my d theta dt's in dot notation. I get this as theta dot times negative sine theta x hat plus cosine theta y hat. And we got lucky, right? Because check this out. So this is the same as that. I feel like I got my, I didn't get my derivatives backwards, did I? Because sometimes you just kind of have a little mental break. If I did, I'll redo this whole thing. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, so dr dt is theta dot theta hat. So now I can go up here and I can redo this. This is going to r dr dt, I'm going to write this as r dot r hat plus r d theta dt is theta dot theta hat. And there is my velocity in polar coordinates. Um, let's say that's r dot. So let's just double check the units here. So r dot has units of uh, meters per time, so meters per second squared. That's a velocity. Uh, and this has no units because it's a unit vector. Uh, theta dot would be in radians per second. So radians per second times meters gives me meters per second, and theta hat also has no units. So these two terms have the same units, so I can add them together. That's just a little check to make sure things are working. But there you go. There's the velocity in polar coordinates. Uh, next, we're going to do the acceleration in polar coordinates, but that will be a separate video. I'm excited.